Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath here to do a new problem as part of the GoMath 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We're going to be looking at number 27 on the CSET, California Multi-Subject Exam. It's from the Math and Science Teacher Certification Exam, Multi-Subject Teacher Certification Exam in California. It's a great problem. It's going to start reviewing some of those harder math problems for you know upper, upper elementary and middle school teachers. Uh, so use this if you're an upper elementary or middle school teacher preparing for your teacher certification exam. Uh, let's look at number 27. It involves prime factorization. And uh, first I'll read it over, and then I want you to read it over to, to get practice with some of that language that you'll see on these new harder problems. It says, number 27, if the number 360 is written as a product of its prime factors in the form a to the third times b to the second times c, c to the first, what is the numerical value of a plus b plus c? Now you read it over. I want you to read it. Read. Pause. Think about what it's saying. And as you read and pause, and unpause, you know, this, this is, it's important to give it a few moments to yourself so you can work through some of that vocabulary. Now there's a lot of vocabulary here. We have the word product. We have prime factors, we have numerical value, we have exponents, I mean we have um, variables that you're adding up, we have variables that you're multiplying and, and raising to powers, we have numbers like 360. So all these things I'm hoping that you have some background in when we talked about prime numbers and prime factorization, um, product involving mul multiplying, and we're, what we're really going to be focusing on with this one is taking this number, this natural number 360, and finding its, writing it out in prime factorization form so we can find out the distinct prime numbers that make up 360. So let's just start. First skill, what did he just say? First skill, just let's find the prime factorization of this natural number 360. I take 360 and I, I use a factor tree a prime, uh, and pull out numbers that multiply to get to 360. Like for example, I see a zero here. So that's like a 10, 10 times, 10 times 36. Now those aren't prime factors, so I'm going to keep on going. Uh, 10, 10 is made up, 10 is a little easier. 10 is made up of 2 and 5. They multiply to get to 10, and those are prime numbers. So I could actually stop right there with 10. I, I boiled 10 down to its prime factors, 2 and 5. What about 36? Well, 36 can be made up of 6 and six times 6. Those aren't prime factors, so i got to boil it down even more. 6 can be made up of 2 times 3, and 6 again is 2 times 3. And if I want to think about the prime factors that make up 360, that would be 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 5 would get 360. Or we could think of 360 as being made up of 2 times 3, um, sorry, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. That gets us to 360. Now this is the expanded way of writing out the prime factorization of 360. Let's look at the abbreviated way. In the abbreviated way, what we do is we just try and identify the distinct prime numbers that make up 360, mainly it's made up of a two, three twos, a three, two threes, and, and one five. And I sometimes write it as five to the first. And what I've done is I've just sort of identified the distinct prime numbers and how many times they appear. And I'm going to be multiplying these out. And that's what this says. Two to the third times three to the second times five to the first says that we're going to do two times two times two times three times three times five. So make sure you, you make the connection that this is one way of writing the prime factorization of 360 that gets you to 360. And this is the more expanded way that gets you also to 360. All right. Now how do we solve the problem? Well, from here, we have all our components. 
we have a to the third times b to the second times c to the first. Make sure whenever you write a number um, in its prime factorization form that you always put the smallest prime factor first. So this would be always lead with a 2, then it would be then a 3, then a 5. That way you know that this first variable, it's always the, the smallest prime factor in the number. So I would lead the a is a 2, and the b is a 3, and the 5 is a c. And then we just find by adding up a plus b plus c to get us to 10. Okay team, now there are things with this problem that make it very interesting. We start getting into more complex language problems involving lots of vocabulary, mixing up the vocabulary. We start to see uh, problems involving, you know, um, ways of uh, looking at prime factorization. So it's really good to have a, a strategy to, to get to the prime factorization in number and be able to express it as exponents, um, exp express it in its um, abbreviated form. You know, um, a to the third times b to the second times c to the first. And then third, not only do we have to get to the prime factorization of 360, but then we have to um, be able to identify the distinct prime numbers, the, the bases and the exponents of, of this number. Meaning you have to be like the base is a 2, the exponent is a 3, so it's 2 to the third. The base here of the second distinct prime number is a 3, the exponent is a 2, and so on and so on. So you can identify what the a's are. I've seen problems like this where they, they, they have a times b times c and then they have x, you know, y, and z. So sometimes they, they just ask you a slightly different version. You have to match up this with this and then you have to like find out the sum of the exponents. So lots of different variations of this problem all involving and really the central idea here is prime factorization. Then you have, then you can add in all these other aspects. Okay, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. I hope you enjoyed this video, this review of prime factorization. Stay tuned for more. Have a wonderful day. Take care.